Hey everyone, this is Andrew with an AWS tutorial series on getting started with IoT Part 2. In this tutorial series, I'm going to link an AWS IoT dash button to a Lambda function, which is going to end up pushing some characteristics about my IoT dash button into an AWS Elasticsearch cluster. Um, I have a previous tutorial on setting up an AWS ES cluster, so make sure you go ahead and take a look at that. And if you haven't purchased an AWS IoT dash button before, the IoT dash buttons can be purchased on Amazon.com for only $20, and I'll link that in the description below for you to purchase. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll click Create Lambda Function, and we're going to set up a blank function. Here we're going to configure a trigger, and we're going to select AWS IoT. And in the dropdown, it'll already have pre-selected an IoT button. Next, we're going to enter our device's serial number, which you can find on the back of your IoT button. And we're going to generate certificate and keys. Next, we're going to download the certificate PEM and the private key, because we're going to need that to set up the IoT button. And now it should be pretty straightforward here to follow these one through four steps. And we're going to first place our IoT button in configuration mode by holding down the button for five seconds until it flashes blue. Next, we're going to change our computer's Wi-Fi to connect to the IoT button's SSID. Once you see that you're connected to the network, go ahead and click on the link in number three. Here you're going to select your SSID and your password to your network. You're going to choose that certificate and private key that we downloaded earlier. You're going to use the endpoint subdomain that was in step three. And you're also going to select the endpoint region. Here I'm in US East 1. Now that our button is configured, it should automatically reconnect us to our Wi-Fi. If it doesn't, make sure you connect to your previous Wi-Fi. Now that we're connected, we can enable the trigger and we can click Next. Here we can finalize configuring our Lambda function. We're going to give it a name. And before I actually upload the code that I want to run, I'm going to write a quick console log here just to show you that everything is working. And we're going to log out the event click of the IoT button. For a role, we're going to choose an existing role and we're going to run Lambda Basic Execution. The settings we're going to leave the same and we're going to click Next. And we're going to create the function. And here we can see that our IoT button is set up as a trigger and it's enabled and we can go ahead and click the button and run some code. Now that we've clicked the button a couple times, we can jump over to our monitoring section and we can see that we've invoked this Lambda function two times. If we jump over to our CloudWatch logs, we're going to see that we have an entry inside of our log streams and we can see the details of the information we clicked because we console log that event out in our Lambda function. Now let's do something fun with this data and let's put it into an AWS ES cluster which I've showed you previously in another tutorial how to set up. And here's the sample code that I'm going to be running. Again, this is in my GitHub repository, so I'm not going to go too in depth here, but I'm basically going to check to see if the index exists. If it doesn't, I'm going to create it, and then I'm going to insert a document inside of that index with the data from the IoT button. And here is a config file that I have where I'm specifying my host and the index and type that I want when I push this data inside of Elasticsearch. And now we need to compress our code and we're going to upload this to our Lambda function. One thing to make note of here is that our file is called lambda.js and our handler is called IoT push. So we're going to name this lambda.iot push and we're going to click save and now it's time to upload our code. So we're going to jump over to our code, we're going to click upload and we're going to select that archive.zip that we created previously and we're going to click save. Now that our code is uploaded, it's time to push that IoT button and start logging some data to Elasticsearch. If we jump over to Kibana in our management screen, we can go ahead and type in IoT-star. We can see that we have a click date. We're going to click create. And now if we jump over to discover, we're going to see our data start flowing in. And here we go, we can see that we have this IoT single click here. And if we refresh, we're going to be able to see some more data after clicking the button a few more times. You can do long presses, you can do double clicks, you can do single clicks. And after clicking a few more times and we refresh Kibana, we can see that we have more data inside of Elasticsearch. 
So that concludes our tutorial on AWS IoT Part 2. In the tutorial, we purchased an IoT dash button and we linked it up to a Lambda function, which then pushed our IoT button data to Elasticsearch. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.